Caroline, thank you for worshiping with us today. And there's a lot going on um, in this year. It seems like September just unlocked a new level of 2020. Um, and everybody's facing something. Um, and I, we've, we spend so much time in prayer and we spend so much time talking about um, this, this word that we're actually about to sing about. And it's this word revival. And we're about to sing a song called Lord Send Revival. But I wanted to talk about that word um, just really quick. You know, a lot of times when we think of the word revival, we think big picture. We think, you know, revival in a nation. We think revival in our church. Um, and we can pray till our knees blister for God to send re revival to our, to our country and to heal our land. But really, it's super easy to miss the fact that revival is very, very personal. And I think what a difference it would make if we started praying for God to send revival to our own soul first, to revive our spirit first. What is revival? Revival is God literally reviving something, bringing something back to life, bringing, breathing life back into something. And there's a, a scripture that I wanted to read uh, that was written by David, the boy who killed uh, the giant Goliath. He went on to become a king of a nation and, and a songwriter. He wrote these words, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. We can pray for, for God to, to, to revive our nation, but really I, I think revival is such a personal thing that it has to start in our own spirit. And from there, that love and that truth and that life that God breathes into us overflows. And it pours into our family around us. It pours into our friends. It, it pours over into our work. From there, it goes to our coworkers. It pours into our church. And from there, it starts pouring into the community around us. From there, it pours into our city. From our city to our state, from our state to our nation, from our nation to the world. But it starts right here. It starts right here between me and God. And so this morning we're gonna sing, Lord, send revival. And I want that to be our prayer today, that God would send revival in our own spirits. Let's sing it today. like a river wash over me immerse me in water as deep as the sea hide me in love your healing embrace it's like a river As I worship your majesty, I worship your holy name, Jesus, my everything, all that I am. I worship your majesty. I 
Thank you so much for your power, for your healing power, God, for your loving embrace. And God, I ask that you would send revival, send revival into our hearts. God, send revival to the Bay. God, send revival to California, send revival to this nation, send revival to the world. God, we need you. If there was ever a here in our lifetime that we could see so clearly that we need you, it's now. And God, I pray, God, that we would receive you gladly and with hearts open. God, I pray that we would experience you even now, wherever wherever we're sitting at, as, as we watch this, God, whether we're at home, in our car, God, I pray that, that we'd have a moment with you right now, and that our hearts would be open to, to the word that's about to be shared with us. God, we love you. We thank you for all that you are and, and all that you're doing in our lives right now and all that you're going to, all that you're going to do. We pray this in your precious name, amen.
Man, um, I love that song. I think it's just a beautiful, beautiful song and, and beautiful message and story uh, for God to send revival, right? He's done it before in the past and he can do it again. And man, Dallas and Jay, um, Allie, thank you so much for leading us in worship and just the amount of time and effort that you guys put into that. Um, we're so appreciative of it. Uh, I'm going to pray for us as we jump into uh, the message here in just a moment. Um, but uh, in, in fact, I'm going to have us read some scripture together. Uh, so if you're watching right now, you can go ahead and unmute yourself or uh, turn on your video because I'm going to have you uh, um, kind of... Uh, Roots and scripture for us collectively together as, as a community. Let me pray for us. God, thank you so much for the beauty of that song. Um, God, that you can send revival. And <clears throat> it starts with us, as Dallas mentioned. It starts with me. It starts with me drawing a circle around myself. And God, it starts in my heart, in my mind, in my spirit, in my soul. I pray that you would bring um, life back into us, breathe your spirit back into us. Those that might be feeling uh, hopeless, those that might be feeling uh, down and out or lost or confused in the season, I, got, I pray that only you would do what you can do inside of us, and which is just restore the spirit, uh, the joy of our salvation inside of our hearts. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. Hey, so we're going to read some scripture in just a little bit. <clears throat> uh, but he, I, I want to give you kind of these three phrases uh, that we're going to talk about for the next three, uh, couple weeks together. Uh, and the phrase is this, um, uh, your voice in this season, your voice is more important than your words. Your presence is more important than your presentation. And clarity is the next best thing to certainty. I want to say that again. And we're going to focus today on just that, that, that bottom part, the last part of that phrase. Your voice is more important than your words, the quality of what you say. Your voice needs to be heard. Your voice is more important than your words. Your presence is more important than your presentation. And clarity is the next best thing to certainty. I want to start with that last phrase. Uh, clarity is the next best thing to certainty. Um, last night, uh, as Jamie was uh, making uh, our dinner, I was uncertain if we were going to have dinner last night. Um, how many of you have ever, ever been there? How many of you, you don't want to be there, right? Um, and so last night, we were getting ready to have dinner. And uh, I'm telling you what, like, we were hunting all over, like, the East Bay and Fruitvale, and Oakland and Alameda looking for these chilies to go with these tacos that Jamie was making for tonight's dinner. And so we finally got the chili we found in Fruitvale because that's where you're gonna, you're gonna get some Mexican uh, 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 heat. You're gonna get it in Fruitvale. And so we went there to get the stuff that we needed for our food for tonight's dinner and, or for yesterday's dinner. And we got everything we needed. We went to the farmer's market, picked up the meat. And uh, Jamie's kind of in the kitchen. She's making uh, the food, the tacos, getting it all ready. I mean, she boiled the meat for, for hours. I mean, like, this is going to be delicious. Like, this is some juicy Korean meat. Like, this is going to be awesome. Uh, and she turns away for just a little bit. I think she goes to the, to the restroom or something like that or to the, the living room. And as she turns her back. Some of you already know this, but... We have a German Shepherd lab. His name is Chad. And uh, Chad, as soon as Jamie turns her back, like you don't even hear him go into the kitchen. He's making his way into the kitchen. He jumps up on the counter, and there's the meat that's all sauteed and delicious and cooked. And he literally ate majority of it. And so, like, <laughs> Jamie comes back to the kitchen and she notices that, like, the meat is gone. <laughs> And I come out, I was like, hey, is dinner, is dinner ready? And she's like, I, I don't know if you're going to, I'm not certain you're going to have dinner tonight. And it's because what, Chad ate all of this meat that we were supposed to uh, have for our delicious tacos that we hunted all over the Bay Area for. Um, and I, I say that to say this, look, uh, in times of, of change and, and, and crisis, um, people want from you most what you can't give them. Right. Um, in times of uncertainty, in times of, of crisis and change, people want from you most what you can't give them. 
And what they want from you, come on, does somebody know what it is, right? What they want from you is certainty. But in times of crisis and change, you can't give them certainty, right? Um, I think about the story um, that I'm going to have us read here in just a little bit. But I think about the story in, uh, in, in Moses and Joshua, kind of their storyline and the things that they had to go through as leaders. And some of you, that's where you're at. You're, you're a leader, okay? You're leading your family, you're, you're leading your kids, you're leading a job, you're leading a business, you're maybe an entrepreneur, uh, you're leading a friend through this, navigating them through this whole crisis and change. And um, they want from you certainty. They're looking for you. They're looking for answers. They're looking for certainty from you. And they want that most. But it's going to be hard to provide for them certainty in this season. But the next best thing to certainty is clarity. And uh, before we jump into the content for today, uh, there's a piece of scripture that I want us to kind of read together. And uh, it's going to be here on my screen uh, in Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. And uh, I need some volunteers, some people who are going to read the scriptures here on my screen. There's, uh, which as you can see, there's yellow, red, blue, and green. And so uh, anybody go ahead and unmute yourself, uh, turn on your video um, if uh, you're interested and ready to read uh, the yellow. Let's just call it out right now. Who's going to read yellow? Who's going to read red, red, blue, and then green? Um, any volunteers? I'll take yellow. Sweet. Okay, we got we got Hennessy. She's got yellow. Who's got red? I'll take red. Val has got red. <clears throat> you sure you can pull that off with Aiden? I'll hold them off. He's <laughs> got it. Got it. <laughs> You're watching right now, and the kids are in the background, and it's crazy. Yeah, we're gonna make it work. It's awesome. Uh, so we got red. Who's got who's got blue? I'll Sorry, who was that? Uh, you're gonna have to choose. What? Why don't Omar take you? Take green, and then whoever said blue can take blue. Somebody else said blue. Yeah. Uh, say your name if you said blue. I think I did, but then someone else did too. So. Yeah, I said blue as well, but I'll take green. Yeah, take blue, Rebecca, and we'll and then Omar will take blue. I mean, green. He she'll take green. <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. So we got Joshua and Joshua chapter one. If you're just tuning in with us now, we're in Joshua chapter one, and we're gonna read uh, verses one through six, and we're gonna start with yellow. Who's got yellow? I got yellow. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. The Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the river Jordan, the Jordan River, into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the... Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the West. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Awesome. Hey, congratulations. You, you, you read the, the scriptures. Um, so <clears throat> here, here we have, uh, here's Moses, okay? Um, and he's leading the people, right? Can you kind of know the story? They left uh, Egypt. Pharaoh finally let, let them go. And here's Moses leading the people to um, the promised land, what God had promised them. And uh, as they kind of arrive on the border of this promised land, they kind of blink, right? Uh, they they uh, they kind of got distracted. Um, um, they they got 
uh, distracted from what was happening, right? They approach the borders, literally, they're on the brink of the promised land, and they're kind of waiting to go in, but they don't go in because of uncertainty. They go, they don't go in because of uncertainty, because they weren't sure what was in the land. They weren't sure if they were going to survive, they were going to make it. So they chose to stand on the brink of the land and because of a fear of what was behind the other side of the walls of this land. And so they stand there on the, on the, on, on the brink of this land and not going in that the promise that God had for them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> because there's too much uncertainty. So they wander through this desert, okay, um, and for so long that a whole generation of people passed by. And uh, again, Moses kind of gets the courage just to lead the people back to the land, and he leads them to the land, and they're leading them to the, what we see just right just now, uh, to the Jordan River, and which is literally in between no man's land and the promise that God had for them. So it's kind of really uncertain. And so Moses, um, time has ended, right? So he's getting ready to pass off the scene and now he's getting ready to hand off the people to a young leader. His name is Joshua. <clears throat> and Joshua is getting ready to lead the people into the land. <clears throat> but the problem with Joshua leading the people into the land is Joshua's never done this before. Joshua's never been in a season of leadership like this before. Joshua's never experienced a change in circumstance, a change in a shift of, of responsibilities. He's never been in a position like this before. And so he, it's really uncertain for him as he's getting ready to lead the people through into this land that God had promised them. Can you relate? Can anybody out there, can you relate with the uncertainty that Joshua is feeling? Right? He, he's getting ready to lead these people, but it's kind of, he's not sure where to go. He's not sure the direction. He's not sure what's next. And um, I love what God says to, to Joshua, kind of in this stage of his like uh, 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 uncertainty. This is what he says here in the verse. He says, <clears throat> have I not commanded you, Joshua? Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? And do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. The reason why God said, Joshua, don't be discouraged, don't be afraid, is because Joshua, can you guess, was afraid, right? Joshua was discouraged. This is uncertain for him. And so he was uh, timid and hesitant to step into the promise, step into the calling, step into the promise that God had for them. And so I love that God says, hey, Joshua, look, hey, don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. Look, be courageous. Why? Because he was afraid, because he wasn't uh, 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 encouraged, because he was discouraged. So he says, have I not commanded you? And he says, why? He says, for the Lord. I love this. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. Come on, this is for somebody listening today. Like, the reason, okay, why we, we take courage, we take heart, we don't lose faith because the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Don't miss this. <clears throat> the basis, okay, the basis of Joshua's courage was not in his ability to predict or forecast the future. And neither is yours. Moms, dads, leaders, owners, operators, business leaders, right? New to the Bay Area people, right? Look, the basis of your courage is not in your ability to predict or forecast the future. But the foundation of your courage is the presence of God. The foundation of, of how you can take courage and not lose sight, not lose faith in the season of uncertainty is not dependent about, upon like your, your, your 2019 budget, right? Or your 2018 budget or your 2017 budget, right? It's going to look different going forward. Look, it's not dependent on what you had in your household, your previous job, right? It's going to look completely different going forward. And so the future is not dependent upon 
what the past looks like for you. No, no, it's dependent on the presence of God in your life and in this season of uncertainty. Why? Because for the Lord your God will be with you for it, wherever you go. And I love, I love what I love what Joshua does next. I want to have someone read this verse for me um, to volunteer and just just uh, read this verse. I I love what Joshua does next, right? Um, I'm going to get ready to share the verse here in a little bit, but I love what Joshua does next. He doesn't, okay, he, he doesn't, like, give them what they're asking for. He doesn't give them what they want, right? It, especially in this season right now. Like, it's so easy to, to, to just make something up, to go along with, like, hey, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to predict into the future, right? Uh, uh, it's so easy to do that right now. I mean, a lot of politicians are doing it right now, right? Come on, somebody, right? Uh, they're making a lot of promises, right? But they don't know what the future looks like. For me, I don't know about you, but for me, it's really hard to trust somebody. It's really hard to trust somebody when there's the future's uncertain, right? And um, I love what Joshua does, though, in this circumstance. He doesn't give them what they want to hear. He doesn't give them what they're asking for. He gives them, he doesn't give them certainty, he gives them clarity. Don't miss that. He doesn't give them certainty, he gives them clarity. I love what Joshua says. I'm going to have somebody read the verse here in uh, Joshua 1.10. Any volunteers to read this verse? Joshua 10 and 11. We'll be reading both verses. <clears throat> I can do it. Awesome. Thanks, Marco. Uh, so Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. Thank you. So he says, so Joshua ordered the officers of the people. So he says, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. He, he, he doesn't give them certainty. He gives them clarity, right? Because if you're those people and you're thinking, wait, 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 come on. Uh, my ancestors, they already told me there's giants in the land. Like, I'm not going to, like, how are we going to get across the Jordan? How are we going to get to the other side? How are we going to defeat the giants when we get to the other side? He doesn't give them certainty because he doesn't know what's on the other side. But he does give them clarity. He says, look, based upon what I know now, this is what the next step is going to look like. He says, look, based upon what you know now, go get your stuff, go pack your lunch, go pack your bags, and meet me back here in three days. But wait, 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 wait to watch the people would have said, but what about when we get to, no, no, no. Go get your lunch, pack your bags in three days. Yeah, yeah, but my, 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 uh, my grandma, my great, 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 great grandma, they told me about, no, no. But what are we gonna do when we, no. Based upon what we know now, go pack your lunch, get your bags, and meet me here in three days. He doesn't give them certainty because he doesn't know what's on the other side of the walls, but he does give them something to do. He gives them clarity. And in this season of uncertainty for you, as you're leading um, your kids, moms, dads, as you're leading uh, from home, work from home, as you're leading a friend, as you're leading a spouse, a loved one, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a fiance, as you're leading yourself through the season, look, don't get so caught up on what's on the other side of the wall. Just based upon what you know now, just take the next step. Because you don't need certainty, you just need clarity. And, um, 
here's here's my advice okay here's my advice to, to me i'm being transparent this is i'm in this season right now like i'm leading a church i'm leading myself i'm leading my spouse i'm leading chad to not eat our food right i'm leading people and so in this season like here's what i'm kind of speaking into myself and i hope that it's going to encourage you as you kind of lead yourself lead people lead your friends lead your kids lead your family in this season here's something i want to encourage you to do, but be honest don't pretend and don't exaggerate Joshua didn't do it. Joshua was honest, right? He didn't, he didn't pretend like there wasn't giants on the other side. Look, he didn't exaggerate. He said, look, just go get your lunch, pack your bags, maybe in three days. When we get here in three days, we'll know what the next step is. Why? Because yeah, it's uncertain, but what's clear is what we need to do now. And he gives them these things to do. And I want to encourage you in this season, but hey, just don't pretend, be honest and don't exaggerate but acknowledge the situation and move forward. Look, right? Say, say things, say things like this. Say things like, look, um, I don't know when we will open our doors again, but in the meantime, here are the three things we can do and we can do now, right? Right, say, say things like, look, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know right now, <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen right now, but I'm confident that we can figure this out together, right? Look, we've never, we say things like, we've never faced anything like this before, never. But, but with God's help and your talent, come on, look, I'm not worried, right? Say things like, I don't know, I don't know when we're gonna open our doors again, but in the meantime, here are the things that we can do and we can do now. I think this is so important for you as you kind of lead yourself, lead your family, um, work from home in the season, because what's more important than certainty, certainty is, is clarity. What's more important than certainty is clarity. And Joshua kind of leads the people forward in the best way he knows how. And uh, there's somebody else also that we kind of know it's a more familiar story that we're familiar with uh, that the times and the seasons were very uncertain uh, very skeptical um, they weren't sure if they were going to bounce back right and after jesus resurrected from the dead the disciples are asking questions like hey what's next what's going to happen jesus you're getting ready to leave you're getting ready to leave us and depart from us and now it's us for no more us and the disciples hey what, what do we do now like how do we move forward like what's next for us and as jesus gets ready to depart the scene right i love what he tells them i love the advice he gives to them you remember what it is matthew chapter 28 he says and then jesus came to them and said look all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He says, therefore, without authority, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all things I've commanded you. And surely, just like how Joshua was commanded, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And Jesus gives them the marching orders for what's next based upon what they know now. It's like, look, hey, I'm leaving, I'm departing, but based upon what I know now, hey, the teachings that I've given you, take them and now make disciples of all people, all race, all genders, all colors, and teaching them to obey. And just like I was with Joshua, I'm with you to the end of the age. When you don't have a certainty, clarity is the best next thing in times of change. Because people want it from you. And my advice to you is to give them not what you don't know, give them what you do know. And based upon what you do know now, this is how we'll move 
forward. <clears throat> in fact, in the next uh, couple weeks, well, us as a church, um, maybe this is your first time joining us. Uh, like I mentioned before, we launched in September of 2019. Um, and six months after we launched the shelter in place took place and we had to take our services and take our talents online um, and not to South Beach, because <clears throat> that's awful. Why would you do that? Um, <laughs> but um, so we just kind of had to navigate as a church. And so we've been meeting longer online than we have been uh, in person as a church. But this coming uh, uh, month in November, a month from now, next week, a month from next week, we'll be having our first in-person gathering again. And it's going to be outdoors. It's going to be safe. And um, you'll hear a little bit more about that from Valerie, but it's going to be an outdoor service that we're going to have uh, for um, uh, our next in-person uh, gathering. And it's going to be uh, safe and outdoors. Because, look, we don't know what's next in the future. We don't know what's certain. But we do know, based upon what we know now, here's the next things that we can do. And we can show up. We can love people, we can love one another. We can continue to use our talents to serve, to make a difference. It might look different, but based upon what we do know now, this is how we can move forward. Why? Because just as Joshua got the courage to go because of who was with, with him, the presence of God, and the disciples got the courage to take that next step, watch, and make disciples of all nations, we too, because of the presence of God with us, we can make a next step. We can love people, we can know God, we can find community, we can discover our purpose, even in the middle of uncertainty, and we can make a difference. This clarity is the next best thing to, to certainty. Next week, I wanna share with us um, the other two phrases, your voice is more important than your words, and your presence is more important than your presentation. Uh, let me pray for us, and uh, Valerie's going to step in and kind of share with us next steps for the next coming weeks. God, thank you so much for <clears throat> uh, just this morning, uh, just to see familiar faces and to encourage one another through the reading of scripture, prayer, uh, um, worship of song and teaching. Thank you for the faces. Thank you for uh, the individuals that are connected and God, um, they're taking heart, taking courage in this season that might be just difficult for them. I pray for them and their families and everything that they're touching, that they're leading. Uh, God, that you multiply, that you bless it, that you provide a little bit of clarity for them to take the next step in their faith journey. But not just in their faith journey, but God, in, uh, um, in the world, and the things around them that they've been given to lead and to manage and to handle. I pray uh, for your wisdom and direction uh, for us as a church and as individuals as we lead the way forward. And we thank you for the scriptures that provide examples and encouragement to us in this season of uncertainty. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Uh, in just a little bit, uh, Val, you want to give us an update of what's uh, next. Yeah. So my name is Valerie. I'm part of the dream team here. For those of you who don't know me. Um, but we have uh, three things. I have three things that I want to talk to you guys about really quickly. Um, the first thing is life groups. Um, just because we are social distancing doesn't mean that we need to isolate ourselves, um, especially during this time. So if you um, are not a part of a life group right now, I want to encourage you to go to our website and you can um, join a group. We have two groups, one in Oakland and one in Alameda. And um, I know for me, it's been a great time um, to, to feel supported, to feel encouraged, to feel heard and seen during these group um, times. And we also discuss things, we get to open up and just find community. So if you're not a part of life groups, I wanna encourage you guys to sign up. Um, I know it's helped me a lot during um, social distancing. Uh, the second thing is uh, here at Storyline, we believe that giving is true having, and we like to lead the way in irrational generosity. 
And uh, over the last few months, we've been able to um, support local businesses. We've been able even to do a school supply drive. And we're able to do those things because of people like you guys who decide to give and donate and support the community. So again, you can do that on our website. There is a little give tab that you can click on and um, you can give and um, help us support our community. Um, and then the third thing is, uh, Kim already said a little bit about it and I'm super, super excited about is our um, in-person and our first in-person service. That's November 1st at 10 a.m. Like he said, it's gonna be outside. We're gonna be smart about it um, and you know, follow all those COVID procedures that we need to follow. Um, but we're super, super excited. Um, this is gonna be our venue. Um, so um, it's already, we're, we're super excited. And I know you guys say, wow, like it's a whole month, right? Um, but I told Dallas, um, I have something to write in my 2020 planner. Uh, because so far it's been like in a drawer somewhere. Uh, but get your, get your, if you have your physical planners or your calendars, go ahead and mark that right now. Um, make a note of it. We're super excited. I know you guys are excited. Um, but let's not forget. Let's plan for it. Let's get excited about it. But it's an awesome venue, obviously. Um, but uh, we're really excited about that. So go ahead and write that up write that down. So remember three things. First is if you're not part of a life group, go ahead and sign up for one. I know it's been huge for me in Dallas and we love being a part of life group. Second, there's a tab where you can give um, to help support our community, our church, and be able to partner with us as we serve our community. And then third, uh, first uh, in-person gathering, November 1st. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pray and then we'll be um, dismiss. Thank you guys for hopping on. I hope that you guys can join us next week too. Um, we love getting to do this with you guys. So I hope to see you guys next week. Let's go ahead and pray and then we'll be done. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for Storyline and the impact that they've had not only in my life and my family's life, but in this community in Oakland, Lord. And I just ask that you continue to use us um, to, to, to impact others' lives, to share more about you, and I ask that you um, continue to just bless us. I know it's been a wonderful year. I ask that you give us many more years and that um, you continue to um, use this group of people who are online today and um, who are, are not online today uh, to just make a difference. And we love you so much. We're excited for the upcoming things. Help us just, even though we're not certain about the things that are going on, that we could um, have clarity in these times. We love you so much and we pray these things in your name. Amen. Awesome, guys. Hey, thanks for joining on. And uh, we'll see you back here, same place, same time next week. We're going to have a little bit of a different format. Like I mentioned, we'll just be mixing up some different things. Uh, but next week, we'll be uh, meeting here, same place. And we're going to break up after this, this, this sermon's over into a smaller uh, groups. And we're going to have some questions to discuss um, regarding the, the content that we shared this morning or next week morning. All right, see you again next week. Thanks again for joining on.